What's going on guys? Day number two. Who's excited? I'm excited. I got both the dogs here now. Oh, at home. Like this one. <laughs> this one Let's go. And, uh, no, they really just want to leave. They're stuck. In Don't you bark. Get there. Alright, so today we got a uh, the second part of 19.1, which is uh, solving problems. All right, so uh, just like I did with the conceptual questions, I want to go through these with you guys uh, just to make sure we're cool on how to do them. Um, shouldn't be too bad, but uh, we got to do it anyways. So uh, today is a pretty easy day, right? Same PowerPoint as yesterday, um, but we're going into the problem solving stuff instead of just the conceptual stuff. So number eight is the start of the uh, solving problems part. System consists of 55 electrons and 43 protons. Is the total charge of the system positive or negative? Now hopefully that's a really easy answer for you because there are more electrons than protons and if we have more electrons and electrons are negatively charged and we have more electrons and electrons are negative that means that our system has a negative charge Alright, system has a negative charge. So used to writing on the board. Um, part B, right, gets a little bit more detailed. What is the total charge? Now, there are actually two ways to answer this, right? There's an easy way and a little bit of a harder way. So the first way is to look at and say, well, we have 55 electrons, we have 43 protons, so uh, how many extra electrons do we have? 55 minus 43, uh, some quick mental math there. That gives us 12, yeah? That didn't work. Gives us... Jesus Christ. Cheese and rice. You can do it. All right. Gives us 12 extra electrons, right? Um, and we can actually give the total charge of the system in terms of how many extra uh, electrons we have or how much extra charge we have. So we could say that the total charge in the system is negative 12 E. Right, that's negative 12 times the charge of an electron or charge of like the, the 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. This, this is an acceptable answer. Negative 12 E works. Now, if we want to take that a step farther and actually figure out the charge in coulombs, right, the actual number, what we have to do is take this negative 12 and multiply it by the charge of an electron. So, negative 12 times the 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Um, and if we do that, we'll get the total charge in coulombs. So, negative 12, negative 12. 1.6 gives us negative 19.2, so we get negative 19.2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. All right, we can rewrite that because we don't really want two numbers in front of the decimal when we're writing scientific notation. We just want one, so we can rewrite this as negative 1.92 times 10. We move the decimal place to the right or sorry, to the left, so this gets more positive by 1, so that would be negative 18. So, two ways to write the answer. They are equivalent, right? Negative 12 E or 1.92, negative 1.92 times 10 to the negative 18 coulombs. And if it doesn't specify, right, if it doesn't say give your answer in coulombs, right, this is way easier than doing it that way, uh, but both are correct. Number nine, 
system consists of electrons and protons only. It contains 150 electrons and has a total charge of positive 22e. What is the mass of the system? So, we want to know the mass of the system. It means we need to know how many particles there are. Right? We need to have an idea of how many particles are in the system. So, we know that it has 55 electrons. So, the system is 55 electrons. But we don't know how many protons. Right, we're not sure. But it tells us that the total charge, okay, I'll just write this down, the total charge is positive 22E. So what does this tell me, right? What does that 22E, positive 22E tell me? Well, it's positive, right? So that means there should be more protons than electrons, right? More protons means more positive. Um, and if we have 22 more, right, that means we actually have 22 more protons than we have electrons. So if we have 55 electrons, 22 more than 55 means we have, so let's just do the math, 55 plus 22 is 77 protons. Right, we got 77 protons. So our system right, is 55 electrons and 77 protons. So now we want to figure out what the mass is. All right, so um, we basically need to look at what is the mass of an electron, what is the mass of a proton, take the mass of an electron and multiply by 55, because we have 55 of them, take the mass of a proton, multiply by 77, because we have 77 of them, and then add those together. So let's do the electron first. So what is the mass of one electron, right? Me. Uh, I think I put it in the slide. Let me go back and check. Did I? I did. All right, so the mass of one electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilogram. So we have 55 of those. So I'm going to take 55 times 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st, and that will give me 9.11, that's 4.1, not 1.1, one one, times 55, gives me 501.05, so okay. we get 501.05, times 10 to the negative 31st. Again, I'm doing this separated out so that if you don't have a graphing calculator, you can still do it. If you got a scientific calculator or a graphing calculator and you can just multiply that, that's fine. That's, that works. Um, so we get 501.05 times 10 to the negative 31st. Again, we only want one number in front of the decimal place, so we have to move this 2 to the left. That'll give us 5.0105 times 10. We moved it one, two places, so that'll make this negative 29 kilograms. All right, and then we got to do the protons. We check out the mass of a proton. Uh, it's in there as well. 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27, all right, I always forget that one, kilograms. So we're going to take that and multiply by 77. So 77 times 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27 will give us 77 times 1.673 is 128. Point eight two one times ten to the negative twenty seven. Again, we want to rearrange that, so we move that twice. That'll give us one point two eight eight two one pound drill. Kind of cool. Times ten. We moved it twice, so negative twenty five. Oops, that's not five. That's a seven. 
negative 25 kilograms. All right, and then last thing we want to do is add those two together. So 5.0105 uh, to the negative 29 plus 1.28821 times 10 to the negative 25. Now, this one is uh, tricky because we can't add things that are to different exponents, right? It just it doesn't work. Um, so we got to think of a way to do this. I think the best way is to rewrite one of these so that they are uh, the same exponent, right? Let's rewrite this so that the tens are to the same exponent. And then we can factor them out and just add what's on the inside. So right now this is to the 29th. Let's write this so that it's to the 25th. So if we want to write this to the 25th, we have to move the decimal place one, two, three, four places to the left, right, if we're going to make it bigger. So one, two, three, four. That'll give us point zero, 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 five, zero, one, zero, five. They're both palindromes. Sign of 10 to the negative 25th. Plus 1.28821 times 10 to the negative 25th. Right now they have the same exponent. We can factor out that 10 to the 25th, and we'll get 0 0.0005 plus 1.28821 times. 10 to the negative 25th, and then we just have to add those two numbers together, uh, which will give us 1.8000500105 plus 1.28821, basically the same thing, 1.28821. 1, 1, 0, 5. All right, so didn't really change the number at all. Times 10 to the negative 25th kilograms. All right, so kind of a long problem to do this, but um, worth it to kind of note, right? How much did the chart or the mass of the electrons really have an effect on the mass of the entire system, right? If we look at this, the mass of the protons started out 1.288. Well, the mass of the total thing started out 1.288, right? It's not until we get to this very end part that the electrons kind of start having an impact, right? They start having an impact there. So in terms of, like, how much mass or how much um, the mass of an electron affects an entire system, it, it really has, like, no impact, right? Electrons are so much smaller than protons. Um, their masses doesn't really count for anything, right, until you get to... Uh, what's that? Tens, hundreds, thousands. Tens, hundreds, thousands. Millions, millions of the mass, right? It's it's not a lot at all. So, just something to note. What do we got? Two left. All right, number ten. System consists of electrons and protons only. Contains two hundred and twenty. Er, sorry, three hundred and twenty protons. Total charge of negative fifty one e. What is the mass of the system? So we're essentially doing the same uh, problem that we did last time, right? We know the protons, we know the charge is negative two, negative fifty-one. So if we look at the system, this time we know we have three hundred and twenty protons. We know the total charge is negative fifty-one e. So that means there are 51 more electrons than there are protons. So we take the 320, add 51, that'll give us 371 electrons. Right, and then we're doing the exact same thing, right? We want to figure out the mass of the protons. 
figure out the mass of the electrons. Um, basically the exact same thing we did last time, right? We know the mass of the proton is 1.673. Seven, three, yeah, I was right. Six, seven, three times ten to the negative twenty-seven kilograms. We know the mass of an electron is nine point one one times ten to the negative thirty-first kilograms. So we're going to take the mass of the proton, multiply by our number of protons, which is three hundred and twenty. So 320 times 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27th. Uh, let's do it real quick. 320 times 1.673, 535.36 uh, times 10 to the negative 27th. I'm going to leave this uh, like this for now because we're going to have to end up changing them to uh, match their units anyway. So we might as well just let it be for a second. Uh, mass of an electron, we're going to take 371 times 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st. 371 times 9.11 is 3,000. 379.81 times 10 to the negative 31st. Now, just like last time, we want to make these match up, right? So I think the easiest way to do this is to make this become to the 27th, right? Uh, because we'd be moving the decimal place to the left. So to get this to 27, we need to move the decimal place uh, four places. So one, two, three, four. So now this becomes 0 0.337981 times 10 to the negative 27 kilogram. This one was already 535.36 times 10 to the negative 27. So now we just have to add those two together again, right? So we can factor out the, well, I'll write it out. 535.36. Times 10 to the negative 27 plus 0 0.337981 times 10 to the negative 27. We factor out a 10 to the 27, so we get 5.36 plus 0 0.337981 times 10 to the negative 27. And let's see. We'll get 535 five point. That becomes a 6. That becomes a 9, 7, 9, 8, 1 times 10 to the negative 27. Alright, and then we don't want it to look like this, so we move the decimal place two places again which will give us 5.35, uh, we'll round after that, right? 7 times 10 to the, we move it twice, negative 26. And there is our answer. Cool, cool. This is so great, you guys don't have any questions. Do you guys have any questions? No? No questions? Questions? No? Good. All right. Checking. All right, last one. Uh, how much positive charge is contained in three moles of argon? Argon. So, uh, we did a problem like this in the practice problem, right? It's practice problem like two or something like that. So, first thing we need to figure out, right? How much positive charge? So, um, positive charge means we need the number of protons, right? We want to figure out um, how many protons in three moles 
of argon, right? Because that, when we get the number of protons, we can multiply it by the charge of a proton, which is positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative uh, 19, and then we can just multiply those and we'll be good. So we need to figure out how many protons, right? In order to figure out how many protons there are, we need to know how many atoms, or I guess how many protons Ah, uh, uh, yeah. We'll say it like this. How many protons are in one atom of argon? Right? Just kind of working through what we need to do here, right? The questions we should be asking, right? Um, if we want to know the charge, we need to know how many protons are in three moles. Well, if we want to know how many protons are in three moles, we need to know how many protons are in one atom, and we need to know, right, how many atoms are in the moles of argon. So, atoms in three moles will give me how many atoms of argon there are. Protons in an atom will tell me how many or will tell me how many protons there are, and then I can figure out how many protons are in three moles and eventually figure out how many or how much positive charge there is. So um, this is kind of the process we gotta go through. And we can do it just like we did last time using uh, that field goal post stoichiometry type stuff that you guys love so much. Um, so we start with three moles of argon argon AR. I think so. Oops, I just crossed it out. Three moles of argon. Alright, so we want to go from moles to atoms, right? That's the first step here. I just ran out of lead again. I should stop using a lead pencil. Note for tomorrow. Alright, so three moles um, in one mole of argon, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of argon. All right, that's Avogadro's number. Did I get that right? Did I have the word from yesterday? I did, 6.02, all right. Sometimes, you know, I gotta check with Mr. Pat or something to see if I got that stuff right. Uh, 6.02 times 10 to the, note. So 10 to the 23rd atoms in one atom of argon. Now this is the uh, tricky part here because we need to know the atomic number of argon, which I do not know off the top of my head. So the atomic number, I'm just going to look it up real quick, of argon. Argon is number 18, so there are 18 protons in one atom of argon. So we started with moles, moles cancels out, gives us atoms atoms cancels out, gives us protons. So we'll be able to figure out how many protons are in this three moles. So we do this uh, three times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 18. All right, and let's do that real quick. Three times 6.02 times 18 gives us 325.08 times 10 to the 23rd, right? We multiply the front numbers, just tack on the times 10 to the 23rd at the end. Um, usually we'd switch this so there's only one number, but we still have to multiply by one more thing, right? This is just the number of protons, right? And if we know the number of protons, we want to multiply, sorry, uh, want to multiply by the charge of a proton, so we take that 
0.08 times 10 to the 23rd. And we want to multiply that by the charge of one proton, which is positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Broke the lead again. I'm never going to use lead pencil again. Alright, um, so, it's positive. We do the math there. All right, I'm going to multiply this by 1.6. That'll give me 520. Point one two eight. So that's the front numbers, the tens, right? We look at the exponents, we add them together. 23 plus negative 19 will give me 4, I believe. So times 10 to the 4th. And then we don't want that to be um, 500. We want it to be a 5. So 1, 2. That gets our exponent bigger by 2. So we'll get 5.20. One, two, eight times ten to the sixth. Coulomb. C for Coulomb. Another way to write that, right? And this is cheating a little bit, but we could do three point two five zero eight times ten to the twenty one two twenty fifth. Right, 1, 2, yeah, 23. E. Positive 3.2508 times 10 to the 25th. E. Same thing, right? Because E represents the charge of an electron or the charge of a proton. So, this times E will give us that. They mean the same thing. You can write it either way. Uh, it's not cheating. It's just taking a little shortcut. Um, and I think that is it for 19.1. All right, cool. I did this, I think, smarter today. Yesterday, I recorded it on my this phone as a video and then tried to upload it to YouTube, and it took, like, 45 minutes. It was the most ridiculous thing ever. So this time, I just did it straight in the YouTube app. Uh, so hopefully, it goes a little bit quicker because that was terrible. Good work. We did it. You wait what you guys look like in class all the time. I just look out. You see that? Just sleeping. What about you? Do you sleep too? No, he's awake. He's good too. Oh, maybe he's fine. Alright, I'll see you guys tomorrow.